Darkbox development has been a long time coming. The first versions of Darkbox gear motors came with these black and gray gearboxes. These I was sourcing from a particular place I had thought was a manufacturer, but it turned out was actually just a middleman that was reselling these. And the reason that I even started with Darkbox V2 is that the supplier I was getting these from decided to stop carrying that manufacturer's products entirely because they were having issues dealing with that manufacturer and they were no longer a reliable source. So it became immediately impossible to get any more of these, leading me to start trying to go a custom route. Now, I could have done the easy thing, which was just find another off-the-shelf gearbox and buy it and slap it on my motors, but I wanted to instead take the opportunity to make Darkbox even better than it was before. One of the modifications that people often make to gearboxes that have a steel ring gear like these is to mill the ring gears to be square. This can save quite a bit of weight. So you can see here, this is a Valkyrie motor on a, or actually a Kraken motor, which is the heavier motor, on the uh, standard drive gearbox. 64.6 grams. And then this is the slightly lighter motor, but it's only a two gram difference with the squared off ring gear, 54.28 grams. So about 10 grams saved, which is pretty significant. It's about 20% of the weight of the gearbox is gone, and there's absolutely no reduction in performance. However, I wasn't quite happy with this because I thought the short shafts were a little bit too short. I wanted it to be possible to add like a bearing support and still have the shaft stick through, or maybe you could have like two pulleys stacked up or a pulley and a wheel. And that just wasn't possible with this short shaft. I also wanted to make sure that the shafts don't break as easily. So I'm getting the heat treat on the shaft changed to make it less likely that the shafts snap. I also decided to have them coat the gearboxes black because these looked ugly, but this was just for sam or initial samples that they were uncoated. So next I got this round of samples. Now this round of samples also has a different motor on it. That is something that I had to swap on myself, but essentially these are now the final production version of the gearbox with a black coating. I might personally laser etch something onto these, but you can see this is the HR, this is the drive ratio. So the drive ratio used to be 23 to one, it is now 22.5 to one, which is only a 2% difference. So essentially the same performance from the drive. The high reduction, however, I wanted to make it a little bit higher of a reduction. So it's now 135 to one, whereas before it was only 107 to one. So this is about 1555 RPM or 1,550 RPM at 12 volts. This is about 259 RPM at 12 volts. And the original HR, which was 171, was about um, 330 RPM at 12 volts. So it's going down to 259 RPM max, but for when you need that much gearing and that high of a torque, that speed probably isn't your main concern anyway. Next, you can see these have different motors on them. I actually went to a supplier that claimed that they were the manufacturer that makes the original Valkyrie motors to get these Viper motors made. And they claim to have been doing this um, for out of darts, but I don't have any way of confirming that. However, this company was really annoying to deal with in communications, and I had a lot of problems getting back and forth with them. Eventually, when I re did receive these samples, actually they originally sent the gearbox supplier and then joined to the gearboxes and sent to me from the gearbox supplier that I've been using. And the gearbox supplier said that some of these were uh, noisy and uh, vibrating way too much. They so put these labels to specify which were which. And uh, sure enough, I had two of the five samples were making horrible grinding noises, and then while I was testing a third one that originally wasn't started making them, which meant that all of these motors could potentially be defective. Um, so I complained to the motor manufacturer, and they basically said um, nothing in response. They kind of stopped emailing me back. So I had already been potentially dealing with yet another motor supplier, and I was basically looking at these guys to make a version of what would replace the Valkyrie motor, and then this other company to make a version of a motor to replace the Kraken motor. 
Now, it's not gonna be quite as powerful as the Kraken, but I think that's actually a good thing because the stall torque of the Kraken motors is 26 amps and they will absolutely fry a motor instantly when they're stalled. So these motors have a stall torque of 19.3, or stall current of 19.3 amps. There's still about 50% uh, more torque than the Valkyrie motor and they deliver just about the exact same RPM. Um, there's actually two different motors here too, you'll see. One of them is labeled weak, one is labeled stronger. That's just based on the magnets. So this has a ferrite uh, ceramic magnet, I believe. This has a neodymium magnet, which is like what most brushless motors use that helps make them even more powerful and efficient. Uh, for a brushed motor, it doesn't necessarily make them more efficient. It's actually slightly less efficient, but only by a few percent. Um, however, you will find that this motor has about 50% more torque than with the almost the identical motor, just with um, different magnets. So they didn't actually tell me they were gonna send me the weaker magnet version. They just did, and it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because this guy performs within about 3% of the torque and the same RPM as the Valkyrie motor. And this one, with the neodymium magnet, is about the 50% more torque that I was going for from what I wanted to replace the Kraken with. So what I'm going to be doing is having them remake all of these motors, but they're going to make them with a case that looks like this. So the equivalent of the Valkyrie is now going to be called the Viper, and the equivalent of, well, not the equivalent of the Kraken, but a di the next level up from that the more powerful motor will be called the Dragon Motor, as you can see I was intending to make this be that. Um, some of my customers, potential customers, were complaining that they didn't like how big this slot is, so both of them are going to end up looking a lot like this with just the three small slots at the back. You won't have to worry about getting any wires tangled up in this slot or whatever. This could have potentially been slightly better for heat dissipation, but I don't think it would have made a huge difference. And I think this way that it will be exactly what my customers are looking for because you will have the option of getting a very powerful motor or an extremely powerful motor. I mean these Valkyrie motors are already so powerful that I've had multiple customers tell me when they're running their robots on them people think that they're running a brushless drive simply because of how much power these brushed motors have. They're really really power dense and for a brushed motor it's almost unheard of to get that level of power in such a small lightweight package and especially now that we've got that with a lightweighted gearbox, this will absolutely outperform the, in terms of power to weight, pretty much any brushless drive solution that you can buy off the shelf right now. You'll also notice, even though this is a longer shaft, it weighs about the same as the sample I showed earlier at about 54.4 grams, and that's because I had them reduce the uh, square size from 17 millimeters square to 16 and a half millimeters square to just take out the like gram that the added longer shaft would have added so that this would be still just as compelling from a weight perspective and you get all the benefits of having this longer and more durable shaft. So just to summarize this is not what the final motor will look like, but there will be a Dragon motor that is about 50% more torque and 50% higher stall current than the Valkyrie. And then there will be a Viper motor, which this company will also be making, that will look basically just like this, except it will be from a different company and they will actually work correctly. And those will be almost identical in performance to the current Valkyrie motors. So you'll have those two options to choose from and the pricing will be the same or cheaper than what I'm offering or what I was offering previously. So originally it was $37 for the uh, Valkyrie Drive and $39 for the uh, Valkyrie HR, and then it was going to be uh, $44 for the Kraken Drive and $46 for the Kraken HR. What I'm going to do now is I'm probably going to make the price difference to the high reduction uh, about the same, but the overall prices will all drop by at least a dollar. I still have to finalize exactly how much I want to cheapen them by, but this is essentially just due to the fact that the gearboxes are being assembled to the motors by the gearbox supplier in China, which means I'm not spending 
hours and hours of my own personal time assembling them, which is a labor cost that I had to pass on due to the amount of my time that it consumed. Um, so I'm making that savings get passed on to the consumer now, in addition to this being a much more reliably sourced product and in basically every possible way a better product than it was when I was just buying these off-the-shelf gearboxes. Pretty much zero downsides to this design. I think almost every aspect of this gearbox is better. It's not just the same thing with slightly different colors and a square ring gear. It is from a completely different factory, and I believe they have a higher quality and more consistent manufacturing process. And all of the parts that these motors are assembled with, all of the screws come with pre-applied Loctite from the factory, including the ones mounting to the motor. So everything is Loctited out of the box, no problem. I was manually Loctiting every screw when I was assembling these, and that added you know, a huge amount of mess and frustration to the assembly process. So getting these pre-assembled with thread locker direct from China is going to make it cheaper and better than it was before, with basically no downside. So yeah, that is my quick update on the development process for the Dartbox version 2, or Dartbox squared, I guess you could call it.